This conference will now be recorded. All right. Oh, there we go. Let me redo it. Because did that last time. Ask Johnny if he, I think it's something on his side he has to allow. Yeah. To give me the moderator. Yeah. Yeah. So All right, he says I am the organizer now. Good. This that's conference all will now be recorded. All right, all right, all right. That's what I was getting to. This is why this is so important. If if the steam room was created for this exact reason, this exact exact reason is why I started it. Because after profiting eight of nine years, I realized that so many of my subscribers did not, meaning so many had spent money with me. And even though I was able to turn a profit eight of those nine years, the majority of guys didn't. Something had to change. So either I needed to totally change the way I do things, which what wouldn't be the right approach because we were winning. So if you're, if you're turning a profit, you don't want to change what you're doing. So what I needed to do was be there for the subscribers explain it better, teach them how to manage their risk. More importantly, teach them how to use the subscription because it's it's useless to them if they're not ready to use it the right way. I, I explained to you guys, it happened to me with trading where I lost a lot of money early on um, because I, I wasn't prepared for what I was getting into. Um, so again, let's get this thing going. We got a lot to get to today. It's Saturday, so we got Major League Baseball. We got MMA, even have a handful of boxing bets. And uh, I'm excited. We got a bunch of football that I've already released. And we'll have more futures as well. We're going to go over each and every UFC um, fight. That's what today's steam room is going to be, the bonus. Kind of like we do during Sunday in NFL. This will get us in that. Uh, kind of like our spring training to get me primed to go over each and every NFL game. And I, I really want to do something for college football. Again, it's hard to do a ton of content when you really do this for real, like I do. When you're betting every single day, not just for yourself, but for multiple betting syndicates, it's difficult to then not only have subscription, but promote that subscription, do content, do all those things that matter, even the steam room or the daily stuff that I do. Um, all that takes time. And when you're betting as much as I have to bet each and every day, like it, it gets difficult, trust me. So it's important we meet up at least once a week. But I really think I'm going to try to bump that up when possible, um, even just twice a month you know, do a Saturday too during the NFL season. Uh, just that, because just that's my thank you to you guys. Now, with that out of the way, let's dive right in. Like I said, it's Saturday. We're coming towards the end of July. The second half of Major League Baseball season has begun. We're coming off a winning day yesterday, but the truth is we are getting crushed. Baseball has taken all of our profit for 2024 and has actually cost us money. Now, the flip side of that coin is baseball's been by far one of, if not the most profitable sports over the last decade for myself and the groups I work with. In fact, I, I've mentioned this every time I get asked, and I've been asked on videos, I've been asked on radio shows, what's your favorite sport to bet? Or if you could only bet one sport, what would it be? Those are two very different questions. Here's how I answer it. My favorite sport to bet is actually MMA, because it's the sport that I, I, I follow so passionately, I watch, so I'm also a huge fan. And then I, I enjoy football as well, just because the rest of, of the, the people, it's the biggest deal. Like over those four, five, six months of football, 
as a sports better, it's just nothing better than that. People are so laser focused. They're, they're zoned into what's happening in NFL, what's happening in college football. They're, they're all week. They're talking about the upcoming game. So it's an exciting time. But that's as the entertainment side of it. As far as the business side of it, treating it like a business so that it pays like a business, by far, without a doubt, baseball has been the most profitable. And if I was only allowed to bet one sport, it would be baseball. And it's obvious the reason why. They, they play the most games. There are games every single day, which means the most opportunities for inefficient prices. The short turnaround adds to that. The, the easy ability to manipulate the market for betting syndicates is available to them pretty much all day, every day, unlike the NFL, where public money outweighs wise guy money. In baseball, they could do what they want to the market, and that's why it's been so profitable. With that said, I can't overlook the fact we've gotten crushed this season. Now, there's two things I can do. I can say, listen, they've lost their touch. I've lost my touch. These groups I work with are suck at baseball now. And I either should stop betting baseball, look to fade these guys, or, or what? And to me, all of that makes no sense. Like none of those options sound like good options to me. Those are panic options. Those are, those are the, the options that someone in a panic would make. Those are emotional responses. A reasonable response would be, let me zoom out. Let me look at a statistically significant sample size. And here's what happens when you do. When you move back a little bit, you realize, wow, we finished number one in profit last year in Major League Baseball. You notice over the last couple of years, baseball has been one of the most profitable sports each and every year. So do I just overlook last year? Do I overlook, overlook the last decade and just focus on these last three months? No, that's not how a long-term winning sports better has to approach it. This is why I, I was documenting each and every pick. It wasn't so I could prove these are my results because I was being so scrutinized. If I made a mistake, I was going to get called out by 100 people. So my results are as legit as they come. You, I make one error by one-tenth of a unit and 50 emails get sent in about how, how this was great or wrong or, or this math is wrong. So believe me, I have the most scrutinized results. But the reason I did it is so when someone signed up and they would ask, how many plays do you give out? How much have you increased bankroll? Or, or how many losing months have you had? Here's what I tell them. Scroll back. I've documented every single bet, every single day since November of 2014. Every single bet, every single day. You can go through every year. You'll notice that all but one of those years was profitable when the dust settled. And yet, Every one of those years, I went through horrific losing stretches. I had to overcome the most horrific losing stretches there is. And yet we did. And why were we profitable when the dust settled? One, because we have an edge. Two, we manage risk correctly. But in the short term, Whoever was trying to time the market and time when to start betting, they'll get crushed because you can't do that. And I'm going to bring it back to the example of Bitcoin. I've mentioned it over and over and over again. I am a true believer of blockchain technology. I have zero doubt in my mind that most, if not all, assets that are tradable will be tokenized in the future. That I'm certain of. I don't know the timing of it, but I'm sure it's going to happen. Because of that, and the scarcity 
of Bitcoin, meaning we know how many there are, it, I believe in the project long term, long term. So what do I do? Every month, I buy an allotted amount and I store it away in cold storage and I pretend it doesn't even exist. Almost like I've, I've explained it to my subscribers from back in the day. I've explained it to so many people. We pay our phone bills every month. We pay our cable. We pay our internet. We pay our power. We pay our rent. So how about you, you write a bill for yourself called future? Future. And you, every month, you bill yourself for your future. And that, that you, you decide what you want to bill yourself for your future. You pay 100 a month for your cell phone, right? You pay 100 a month for your internet, right? What's your future worth? Is it worth 50 a month? 100 a month? 200 a month? 300 a month? Well, bill yourself. You will find a way to pay it. I promise you that. But here's what you do. You take 50% of that or 60% what I was doing. And you buy gold. Why? Because since the beginning of time, we've decided as a society that gold has value. Due to its scarcity, we use it mostly as a way to store value. They use it for, you know, some jewelry and a little bit of, you know, uh, element as an element, but it's mostly used to store value and it's done the best job right because if you go back and look and you take what you took an ounce of gold in i'll take any year take 1900 and you take a thousand dollars in 1900 you'll notice what they're able to buy back in 1900 all right so we say we'll take an ounce of gold or a thousand dollars in gold in 1900 and a thousand dollars in cash in 1900. All right. What were they able to buy in 1900? Now look at 2024. That same thousand in gold, that same thousand dollars. What are they now able to buy? You'll see why gold was able to hold its value compared to that thousand dollars, which you now buy nothing. Back in 1900, it probably could have bought you two houses, a house at least. Now it can't even buy you a used car. It can't even buy you a bicycle. It can't even buy you a bicycle. That's why you don't stack dollars. You stack assets. So real quickly, why am I going off on this? Because I was just seeing how the Bitcoin price is coming down now after reaching. Sixty nine four plus this morning. So again, getting back to short term and long term. Now, I believe in the long term of Bitcoin. So that's what I do. I bill myself and I keep it right here. Here, I'll show you. Here it is. Shit hits the fan, the world goes to hell. This is my way out. This is my get out of jail free card. This is it. Everything I've been billing myself since I started buying crypto, since I believed in it, goes in here. Now, with that said, I know that there's gonna be volatility. Volatility in it. It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, it's gonna go up, it's gonna go down. In fact, let's pull up the, let's pull up the chart real quick. And here's what we see. When I started buying it in about 2019, 2020, we actually looked on Coinbase with my girl this morning. I was buying it for about $8,000 per Bitcoin, between eight and $10,000. I was late to the party, I admit it. I was buying between eight and $10,000. Back then I bought a shitload, thank God. The stuff that I banked in cold storage that I said, this I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna put away. This I'm not going to look at till 2030, till after 2030. I was already committed to 10 years. I was committed to a decade investment that I was holding for the long term. 
that. It don't matter how this asset dances because it is the most volatile asset in the history of mankind. So I know it's going to go up. I know it's going to go down, but I believe in the long-term story of it. So here's what I did. I kept that cold storage just like that. And I started buying at 8,000, at 9,000, at 7,000. And I bought a little bit every single month. And when it had a 10% drawback, I bought a little more, 20%, a little more, 30%, a little more, 40%, a little more, 50%, a little more. That's how I set myself up. Not big increments, small increments, small increments, small increments. Now, while that is happening, I know what's, this is what happened. In July of 2020, this is July now of 2024, July of 2020 was about $10,000, $11,000. Well, by May of 2021, so less than 12 months later, it got up to 60,000. So it 6 x my money. I 6 x my money, right? But three months later, it's down to 35,000. Three months later after that, remember, it went back to that new high. It got up to 69,000, 66, 67,000, let's say. So I almost 7 x my money, all of it that I had been. But uh oh, Remember the crash, the FTX crash, all those others that came in 2022, 2020, uh, the fall of 2022. And what happens? Bitcoin crashes all the way down to 15,000, 16,000, right? Now, what I had in cold storage was still ahead, but it wasn't ahead what it was when we were at 69, right? So what was I doing? Should I kick myself? Should I, well, I should have sold, I should have sold, I should have sold. No because I wasn't trying to time the market. I already had made the commitment that I'm gonna follow, ride this asset, invest in this asset for a decade. And that's what I was still gonna, what I'm gonna do and I'm still doing. That's not gonna change. Along the way though, I knew there's gonna be that volatility. And along the way, being a trader, I've long Bitcoin, I've shorted Bitcoin, I've long Bitcoin, I've shorted Bitcoin, meaning I've bet on it, I've bet against it, bet on it, bet against it, bet on it, bet against it. That's trading it. But as far as investing in it, in the, for the long term, I'm prepared for the volatility of it. So for me, it doesn't matter when it went down to 15,000 in fall of 2020, 2021 because my goal was already long-term. And now look, I wake up today and where is it? It's 65 again. So realistically, unless I was looking to time the market, the dance that it did doesn't matter to me. I, if I was in a coma, God forbid, for those last four years, nothing, I would have known nothing. I would have went to sleep, when it was 60, whatever, and got up when it was 60 again. Sure, it went down to 15, two or three times. What I'm saying is that's what markets do. And unless you understand what you're investing in, you're going to be surprised. I wasn't surprised because I knew what I was investing in. I knew that I was investing in the most volatile asset in the history of man. That means that I could drop and increase 50% within hours, if not, you know, shorter. That's the risk I was willing to take because I was willing to go long-term. Now, sports betting is the same way, meaning you cannot time it, the market. You make money by your time in the market. See, that's why, where I am now, I'm over 10 years of having built bankroll. And unless you're only going to bet today or this week or, or, I mean, just today, but if you plan on betting tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, then you're going to have to start to look at it in those terms In forget every day, forget even every week or every month. How am I doing year by year, decade by decade? It's just that we've, we've commercialized sports betting, and that's why 99.5% of all sports bettors that have ever bet are down money because it's, it's not approached in that way. 
But if, if, if you're able to look at it long term and you actually do have an edge and you manage your risk correctly, then if after enough time, you should be up enough to where the short term doesn't matter. But if you're only going to allow yourself the short term, then the only time you're going to have success is if you jump in when someone's hot. Again, you're then you're guessing and you're gambling. But that was my goal with this subscription in the steam room and why I sat down and I knew I was going to lose a lot of money as far as sales go, but I was going to gain in the amount of people that actually won money with me, which made more sense to me where I am in my life right now. It's more about legacy and, and creating something that actually does what it says it's supposed to do. And I know there'll be people that are pissed that tried to time it, but I knew that over the big picture, the story would tell itself. Like, no matter whether you like, you don't like this, that, the numbers aren't going to lie. So again, the reason I'm, this, I, I'm going way long, 20 plus minutes on this is this. Again, if our goals are aligned and your goal is to win long term, that's what we're going to do. And by long term, I'm not betting for a day, a week, a month, a year. I am com trying to compound using the sports betting market as an investment vehicle for multiple years. That's what's put me in this position. And that's what I was trying to replicate for other people. Once I saw that I did it, and we went back and ran the numbers and saw that if someone just followed, they could have done it too. Then I knew this is what we had to do. And I know some people are a year in and they're like, oh, now I'm down or, or 15 months in or five months in or three months in. And they're, they're like, oh, I'm frustrated or I'm quitting. And, and the truth is they probably should. God bless you, but you probably should because you went into it with the, with the, perp, with the right mindset. And you went into it with, with, with the goal in mind and with, with good intentions, with good intentions. But when things didn't work out exactly as planned, you may have panicked, gotten emotional, made more mistakes than you should have, or just aren't, don't have the patience that you may have thought you did. And in, if that's the case, then you should not partner with me and you should probably bet for entertainment and not even buy picks or if you buy you know do one games you like i don't even know how to explain how to even urge and again I, this has come from someone who should be telling you the opposite but again i respect you guys too much i want to see you do well i'm sorry I, i'm just seeing a, a trade set up right now because we got a big green candle that we're trading inside of so if anyone wants to do a, 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 a quick trade, a quick bounce. If you set a buy on Bitcoin at 68,425, you'll probably get a 10, uh, at, at least 1% off that bounce. Just be ready to, I'm talking about day trading that on a 10 minute, 10 minute chart. So you got to stay on top of it, but it's going to bounce off that. It'll bounce off that for sure. Because it's at the, it's even on upslope and parallel channel. Anyway, my mind's else. I'm all over the place. But again, the, the, I, I never want to uh, hide the fact that with the subscription, although I am very confident in the long-term success, in the short term, there will be losses. And I never want to run from that. We're going to address that. So let's do some math. Let's do some math. Because we're not at the adjustment yet. In fact, we were close to it. But we won yesterday. So I know we're under minus 150 too. Right now.
All right. Oh. Forgive me. Hold on. Let's go over results and then I'll get the questions and we'll go over, we're going to go over the whole uh, UFC card too. All right. Here we go. All right. Over the last seven days, last seven days, we've lost 27 units and we have a minus 9.3 ROI. Now we bet 0.25 of that. So it's about seven units down seven units a little a little shy of seven um full percentage of bankroll down over the last seven days at a minus nine nine percent roi that's not sustainable again i know i've said that before but it's just the truth like i can't sustain a positive nine percent roi i can't sustain a negative nine percent roi i will continue to say this i will progress towards the mean that much is fact i hope all of you are around when that happens I, I'm sure most, a lot of you won't be, but the truth is I'm going to progress towards the mean. That's fact. And we know what my mean is. I've turned the profit eight of the last nine years where plus EV as they come. Um, so I will progress towards the mean, just like I will regress towards the mean. And if you remember when I'm running really hot, when we've gone up, you know, 20 plus 20% 20 ROI the last 20 days, last 30 days sometimes. And I'm like, guys, I cannot sustain that. Like the fact it's lasted 30 days is amazing, but that's just not sustainable. I will regress towards the mean. Now, fortunately, my mean is positive, so it will remain profitable, but not at a rate of 20% ROI weekly or monthly. And it's the same when losing betters are hot. And that's why I never understand why people buy losing betters when they're hot, because you know they're going to regress. But I guess it's an emotional response. And I, I don't know. It's just like when I see a guy that I know is negative EV and they're crushing a season, like I am almost tempted to buy the fade, not the ride. But I don't know. People people just think differently, I guess, than than I do. Um, but that that's the last seven days. Now, that what's more important for us is our year. And we are down now about 130 units. That's just the truth of it. And let's do some math. Let's do some math. We do it when we're up. We're going to do it when we're down. Now, if you started with a $10,000 bankroll, you know how we bet. We bet in 0.25 increments and work with a 20% risk of ruin. That means based on my edge, which is improving over the last decade, and more importantly, recently see over the last 3,000 bets, is that we bet 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1%, and 1.25. That allows us to work with a 20% risk of ruin. We will double our bank a little more than eight out of 10 times, and we will lose our bank a little less than two out of 10 times. That I'm comfortable with. Personally, I have a little even lower risk of ruin because I keep more bank. Um, but having done all the math for the subscription over the last decade, a 20% risk of ruin would have been more than enough, more than, more than uh, safe enough as far as risk tolerance goes. So at 0.25, we're betting $25, $50, $75, $100, and 125. So we're never betting more than $125, even with a $10,000 bankroll. So on a, a dog, we're betting a flat 125. On a favorite, we're betting the win 125. So that's correct. If you have $100,000 following my blueprint, you'll never bet more than 1250, 1,250. And even there, we're working with a 20% risk of ruin. I know most people are really over betting their bankrolls. And most people are probably working with like a 70 or greater percent risk of ruin. Just, I mean, if you have a thousand dollar bank, let's say you're starting with a thousand dollar bank and you start betting, you know, a hundred dollars a play, you're at a 90% risk of ruin. You're going to lose your money nine out of 10 times and maybe double it a little less than one out of 10 times. Even at 50%, even at $50 with a $1,000 bankroll, you're upwards of 80% of risk of ruin. So even with an edge, you will go broke if you manage your risk correctly. Incorrectly, forgive me. So what does that mean? It means... Sorry, lost my cat. 
find it later. At $25 a unit, 130 times 25, down 3250. So 10,000 minus 3250 puts us at 6750, even minus what they had to pay for subscription or, or anything like that. If they followed along, there's no reason anyone should have to adjust their bet size. If they from the beginning of the year, from the beginning of the year. Now, if you jumped in at a time where you're uh the 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 short term is greater than that, then again, you have to adjust your own bankroll. I do it as a whole. Year by year, that's how we keep score. I have to pick some arbitrary time to finish the year out. So that's what we've done. And as, as much as I'm not proud of it, that's the volatility of sports betting. I mean, last year we increased starting capital by 80%. So far this year, I've decreased starting capital by 32.5%. So cumulative over that period, it's still up. But you don't see me bragging about that, pushing that, promoting that. No, no, no. I'm going to address what's happening right now because we have to. But I got to keep my eye on the prize. And I have one goal and one goal only. That on December 31st, I'm able to say this was my ninth winning year out of 10. I can't guarantee that's going to happen. I can't promise that's going to happen. I could say I'm a favorite for that to happen based on my history. And that's why I continue to, to, to do this and, and believe in it. And why I'm not going to change what I'm doing as far as day to day and what we're doing in baseball or anything like that. Sure, I, I've, I've minimized our risk a little bit. Um, today, for example, like they bet Houston money line for the game, Houston money line and run line for the first five. I only I bet it. I didn't break down run line and money line for the first five. Instead, I just put it on the money line first five and went 3% instead of two and two. So believe me, my mind's always on minimizing our risk and maximizing our gains. Believe me on that. I'm constantly conscious of where we are unit wise. Um, always, 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 always. So real quickly, you know what we got in baseball. We got a lot of action. We got the Minnesota, San Diego and San Diego first five, Houston and Houston first five, Cleveland and Cleveland first five. We have St. Louis. We got under in the Mets, under in Minnesota, over in the White Sox. The only other Major League Baseball bet that I am currently looking at, which I haven't been able to confirm, is the Tampa Bay Rays, the Tampa Bay Rays. If able to confirm that, um, we'll have a plan. I'm going to look at baseball real quick, so just give me three seconds. All done. All done. I'm getting these from another mover. I'm looking into their thread. Into theirs. So we upgraded Minnesota, right? That just got hit again. Hey, what else are you giving me, brother? Harry, Harry, Harry.
All right, we got him here. Hold on. Over Cubs, KC. All right, I'm going to read these off in one second. Let me just check. We'll go through these together. You ready? All right. Colorado, San Francisco. They went under. They went under in Colorado and San Francisco. See how that starting pitching matchup. All right, started for Colorado. Ooh. Let's see where that number is. And what I'm pulling up right now is my sharpest book. So I could look on if they're shading any of these lines. So let's look at that Colorado, San Francisco, the first one under. Yeah, he shaded, he shaded. See, it's right there, borderline. Colorado, San Fran. I almost want to give it. We'll put a we'll put a a star, and not yet. All right, now let's look at the next one he gave me. He gave me Washington and St. Louis. Washington and St. Louis. It's still at that eight and a half where it opened. They just adjusted the vig. They just adjusted the vig. Let's look at that St. Louis. Okay, flew over last game. Starting pitching. Any recency bias there? Here's what's hard. I'm trying to stay. Uh, as. We'll put a star next to that too, as selective as possible. And uh, it's tough. It's tough. Texas, Toronto, they also went under there. Let's look at this one a little closer. Yeah, I think this one, I think we're going to fire. Hold on. Oh, no. No, we're going to pass on Texas Toronto. We're going to pass on Texas Toronto. Remember, they've been dummying up a lot of these. Now, if I see the steam come in on the under, because remember, it opened eight and a half at eight, and now it's eight and a half. Is it being dummied for the under? We're going to wait on that one. Texas, Toronto. Early game. So we may even be on and see if that money comes in. Gives us uh, an idea. Now let's look at the Toronto side. All right, you ready? 3% play, 3% play. Game 964, 964 
minus 130, minus 130. Give me minus 129 in the wager talk system, but we're good. I'm just considering, do we make, uh, let me see the matchup one more time. All right, 3%, 3%. So I'm just betting it myself too. Toronto. All right, next up, next up. Minnesota, they gave me Minnesota. We bet Minnesota, we upgraded Minnesota, so. We'll take that. Next up, Cubs and LA. Cubs and LA, they are going, uh, Cubs and KC. No, what am I looking at? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What did I write? What did I write? I wrote down. Oakland, Oakland and LA, Oakland and LA. Okay, oh my Dodgers are playing Houston. Okay, Oakland, LAA. Under, under, under is what they bet. Let's see, let's see. Went under nine and a half yesterday. Over. Came in with some overs. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm sold on this one. Nah, no, 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 no. Down to eight and a half from nine and a half. No, no, no. Too late, too late. Oakland, LA. All right. Next up, Cleveland, Philly. Cleveland, Philly. They are looking for the under in Cleveland, Philly. The under in Cleveland, Philly. Let's see how we feel about that one. That's a pass. That's a pass for me on Cleveland. Billy, last but not least, Cubs KC under. They said Cubs KC under is another one that they bet. All right. They went under nine in yesterday's game. Ooh, Cubs have come in with a bunch of unders. KC had a few overs. Pitchers coming in with recency unders. Yeah. Oh, they, oh, they bet over in this one. KC over. Okay. All right. Now you're talking. Here's another where we had an eight and a half down the eight. So without a, a comeback, so we know this was manipulation. Oh, maybe not. We're going to sit that one out. I do lean over, but I'm sitting it out. All right. So 
We're waiting on under Colorado, San Fran, under Washington, St. Louis. Those are the two that we are looking at for possible premiums. Now, I really want to jump into the UFC and go over the MMA stuff. Even I'm going to put the glasses on for that. Because there we're going to have to, we're going to go through each fight real quickly. And, uh, and uh, since I didn't do no UFC video, you guys are getting the best of it right now. Let me see what's Bitcoin. There it is. If you guys see it, Ten minute candle just came down, like I said, to sixty eight four thirty six, and now back up to six fifty whatever. The bounce was going to come, like those. It just does. Those candles never. The chart doesn't lie. It never fails. And here it is. Now it's climbing back up off that bounce. That's but that's day trading. See there, you were not even holding it. It, it through this ten minute candle. We're using the ten minute chart. But I don't think we're even going to hold it through this 10 minute candle. This is where we buy at 68,430, whatever that was. And set a sell at 68,768. Just make a little bit, a little bit, boom, in and out, in and out, in and out. That's day trading. That's day trading. It almost broke out this morning, even on the uh, the hourly chart. It broke out of that upsloping channel, um, but then that next hour didn't confirm. It came back into the channel, and when that's the case, it's just no confirmation. All right, let me see if anything's come in, and then let's get some of this baseball going. I mean, some of this MMA going. Let me see if there's any questions real quick. Got to knock out. All right, all right, all right. Where are we? Nate, I'm sorry. I just don't understand what you mean by how am I comfortable placing so many bets? Yeah, yeah, Nate, you should spread the risk how you feel comfortable. Again, I can't keep it. I, how, I, no matter how many ways I could explain this, over the last 10 years, I think we've given 15,000, like, I'll tell you, seven eight thousand baseball bets in those seven eight thousand baseball bets maybe a thousand times we bet it money line run line money line run line now we had we made a ton of money doing that for nine years this year it's not working i'm not going to stop doing it you don't have to do it i can't explain this enough i i do what's worked for me for a decade, not what worked for me for a week, a month. That's why I'm able to say I am the most profitable capper at Wager Talk. That's why I'm able to say I show my results every single year. That's why I'm able to say this is what I'm up this year or down. This is what I did last year, last the year after that, the year before that, the year before that, because I do this for real. I'm not doing this to sell picks. And the betting syndicates I work for. This is how they make their money. When they see an edge, they're not afraid to bet it if they're losing short term. If you have the proper bankroll and you have 10 x it, 20 x it over the last decade following this approach, because I'm down 30% of this year's capital, I'm not going to change everything I do. That's just not going to happen. You don't have to. You do not have to uh, bet it at all. Again, everyone is responsible for their own money, their own risk tolerance. We're all grown. I could tell you what I do. And if you want your results to look like mine, then you mimic it. Or else you do what works for you. I'm, not, I'm just trying to keep it as real as possible. Uh, again, I keep being asked the same question. Why are we betting it? 
four different ways. I'm betting it four different ways. You don't have to bet it four different ways. You could even bet the opposite. I'm telling you, this is what has gotten me, made me wealthy. Over the last decade, I had nothing. I had less than $40,000 saved up. I had 30 grand. And I started betting 100 to 500 and did this exact thing and didn't look up. And when I looked up in 2022, 2023, I found out that not only had I turned the most profit, but I had now enough money to start betting 1,000 to 5,000 comfortably and had multiple bank rolls to do it. Like that's what's worked for me. If it isn't working for you, then I, I, I highly recommend you change it. Um, so no, what, Nate, please try. When I say we'll never bet more than 1250 on a hundred thousand roll, how can that not be right? We're betting 1.25% of bankroll. That's it. We're betting to win that on favorites and we're flat betting that on dogs. Now, of course we add the VIG. That's what my results reflect with the VIG. No one's trying to get over on you. That's what betting 1.25% of bankroll is. We bet to win 1.25 of bankroll. Or we flat bet 1.25 of bankroll on dogs. Done the same thing now since 2015. Every single day have not changed it. We've never gone higher than 1.25, never. Now, if I give a, a minus 1,000, of course you're, you're adding the VIG. But that bet, what, why, that's why I say, what do I say? We flat bet 1250 on the dog or we bet to win 1250 on the favor. Betting to win 1250 means you're adding in the VIG to win that. That's it. That's it. Trying to understand how you can analyze so many bets. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not like the, the stuff that's coming in on tennis. It's not mine. The stuff that's coming in on soccer. It's not mine. A lot of the stuff is not mine. I move money for winning betting syndicates in wise guys for the last just about three decades. That allows me to see what they're betting. That allows me to build relationships with them. That allows me to know the signs that they need me to get them the most money down on. I'm now high enough on the food chain and I'm able to get enough money down that it's not advantageous for them to use me for scalps as middles. They use me for the real stuff because I could get them the most down without moving the market off screen. So that ensures us we're getting legit stuff. Even from the legit stuff, I vet it on sports that I handicap. I don't handicap Peruvian soccer. I don't even try. I, I don't handicap tennis in Kajikistan. I don't even try. But I trust these groups that I've been moving this stuff for because I have a statistically significant sample size of making money with them. I have over a decade of history with them. And I continue to, to give them uh, money year in and year out. Like they're up on us. So like that is how we're able to move the volume we do. And what happens is it's the same thing for all winning betting syndicates. See, when you win, you need to get down. That's where the problem comes in, getting down. So you reach out to guys that have accounts. When you have accounts, people need you. If they know you could get them down and that their money's guaranteed, you're gold to them. And it just is one big network of people trading to get each other down, that's it. So when I'm able to see all this stuff coming in, I could then decide based on the amount of money that they want me to get down, how legitimate a play is. There, for example, there. Is that, you see that? That's a, that's a bot, that's a bot. There's some of our plays right there. That's one of the groups. That's one of the groups that we move for. I've never made it a secret. This is what I do. I've made my living moving for winning sports bettors and betting syndicates. And because I have 
a good network of bookmakers that I work with, I'm able to guarantee them their money. Since I'm able to guarantee them their money, even if I get stiffed, they're more confident to place their biggest bets with me. And they're going to use their biggest bets like on their strongest stuff. When I see them asking me for 2X or 3X on this soccer game, I don't have to know a single player. I don't even have to know the country. I don't even care most times. I just have to get them that number. Because if, if a group that I've been moving for for all these years that continues to beat the market is asking for more money on these plays, those are the plays that I want to be on as well. Um, that's the, the, the beauty of having access to so much information. And the, the other good part is why I, I share with other guys that do my job is so we can see where these groups conflict because sometimes they disagree. And when that happens, I just sit it out and see, I, I try, my goal has always been um, to have you guys do what I do. Like that would be my, my ultimate goal, my ultimate goal for use that want for the guys that want to handicap that want to actually like learn the bet and stuff. I wish that I could just give you the card or when I send out the bets that you handicap the bet. And when you decide you agree with it, bet it. When you disagree, you pass or you fade it. That's what I do with these groups that I work with. So you understand guys, I get so much stuff, so much stuff that I can't even use. Like I don't, uh, some stuff, I, the lines move, some stuff I know it's not available in uh, all the books. Some stuff is on football or baseball or hockey or basketball, sports that I've been handicapping and moving for so many years that I trust my own opinion in. So that's how we're able to bet the multiple markets. And that's why I've been able to use bet volume. Um, and if you're managing risk correctly, you should want volume. It's like I keep explaining. If you walk into the casino today and you see for one day only, we have a new game and it's called the flip. And on the flip, we are giving you five to one when you're up, when you're right. And you just give us even money when you're wrong. So this is what that means. You walk up to the table, you put a dollar. You say heads or tails. You get to even flip the coin so you know it's a real coin. If you call it right, they give you $5. If you lose, you just give that dollar. Now, you know you have a huge edge because it's 50-50 each time. You should get a dollar, give a dollar. Usually, the casino is going to card you 110, 120 to your dollar, right? That's how they make their money with the hold. But for today only, you know with certainty this table is giving you an edge. How many bets are you going to place? Are you going to limit yourself to flipping it two times, five times? Is 10 flips too much in one day? 20 flips would be way too much in one day. Who could handle 20 flips, right? 30 flips, forget about 30 flips. Who wants, to, who wants to do that? That's how you get buried, right? Of course not, because you have the edge. You should want to flip it a billion times in that day because you have the edge. That's, see. Unfortunately, most people that get introduced to betting get introduced to betting by losing betters, which is obvious because 99.5% are, are losers. So the, rarely is anyone being introduced to sports betting by that half percent that actually wins. And when they get introduced to sports betting, they get introduced as fans. So they come in trying to prick the outcomes of games, trying to predict the winners of games, which is absolutely nuts. Nobody can do that. Like no one can do that, predict outcomes. That's just not going to happen. The best we could hope for is that based on a market of participants who move the prices, that their inefficiency and unsophisticated approach forces the line to get shaded towards that bias. That shading gives us the best of it because the number becomes inefficient, which we then have a bet to place. Irrelevant of anything else, that's what we're truly looking for. 
to, to know we have an edge, to know we have an edge. Here's an example. Here's an example. Let's do this right now because I love you guys. This matters. This matters. And I promise you, we will get, we will get to the MMA. But here's what's most important. This is what's more important than anything else. Major League Baseball. All right. Let's look at some of our bets for Major League Baseball today. Let me look at, for example, who, what is it? Let's pick one. St. Louis. Let's look at St. Louis. St. Louis Cardinals. That's a side. St. Louis Cardinals. Now, I gave out St. Louis Cardinals at minus 138. Okay? That's what the system at Wager Talk put in. I didn't pick it. They, they have up to the minute lines and... When the consensus is a number, that's what they use. So it's got to be at the majority of books. That's the number that is put in for your bet. Okay. So at that time, the consensus was 138. Let's just say, let's say 140. Let's say 140. Let's round it up. No problem. I'm a fair man. Let's say 140. Minus 140. So we got St. Louis, right? At home. At minus 140. Now, we're about to bet tennis in a second, so hold on. This is more important. Now, let's look at what the line is right now in St. Louis. Let me look. Minus 160 at Caesars. Minus 152 at Bet Online, at Bookmaker. Minus 155 at DraftKings. So we have a minus 160, a minus 150. Let's put in a minus 155. Let's go in the middle. Minus 155. So even at this, so we bet minus 140. It's now minus 155. Okay. Oh, hold, ah, I put it in the wrong one. Okay, watch this. There we go. All right, so. Minus 140. Now it closes at minus. We won't even put close. Just put minus 155 where it sits now. We have our closing line value edge is over 14% on that. Like you, we know we placed a good bet, a plus EV bet. Now I can't, I don't know what St. Louis is going to do. Dude, I, I know the pictures before the game goes, before he goes out, his wife, his best friend texts him and says, yo, I'm banging your wife. He may go out there and pitch the worst game of his life. I can't control that. Like, there's so much randomness in one game. The, the umpire may be thinking of going to dinner when there's a perfect strike that would have been strike three. Instead, he calls it a ball, and the next pitch, it's a three-run homer, and I lose the game. That shit happens every day. That's why you can't control the short term. But in the long term, this is the job. That's the job. I, I know with certainty that I'm, I have the edge, that I have a 14% edge in CLV, 14.67 in fact. That's the job. That's why I've been profitable eight and nine years. But I can't over the, over a year I have losing months. I could have three straight, four straight losing months. Just like a Tesla. Here, let's pull up. Let's pull something up. We all know. Go ahead, pick a company. Apple. Apple's a great company, right? Let me pick Apple. Let me let's go to Apple. You ready? Everyone knows Apple. Well, from 
January 2024. February 2024. March 2024. April 2024. People lost money. Their stock price went from 197 to 164. So what's that? 15, 20% they lost in four months. Is Apple a losing company? Are they negative EV? Should we be telling them you need to stop what you're doing, change everything you're doing? You lost four straight months. As a, as a, as a long-term investor, I, I, my stock's down. You better call whoever's in charge of the iPhone and tell them they need, they, they need to change this up. Of course not. Of course not. Why? Because when I zoom out, here's what I see. That in January of 2019, Apple was $40. In April of 2024, Apple was 180. See how that goes? 2019, $60, 180. 3x, 3x. And it had how many times? Four losing months, three losing months. That's markets. And this is why most investors lose money. Most day traders lose money. Most sports bettors lose money because markets are a vehicle of transferring wealth. And they transfer wealth from the impatient to the patient. So many people that I know could have had so much more Bitcoin if they didn't just time it, if they would have just tucked it away and forgot about it, if they even didn't look at the chart and buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell, like they know what the time to market, like they have any idea when these institutions are moving billions and billions and billions of dollars. It's the same with sports betting. Again, I keep it real. I keep it real out of respect to you guys. And look, Apple's putting in a, a topping tail on this monthly. What, this month closes in three days? Oh, we may get a nice short on Apple. Well, the queues are going to come down. Everything's going to come down. We know that. The tech sector shit is going to shit. But again, that's the bottom line that in the long term, even the most profitable companies are going to have to go through negative weeks or months and those who held on who didn't change and didn't try to time it are the ones who got rewarded because after dropping four straight months to 160 apple got as high as 220 it almost almost a 50 percent increase so it went up almost what 40% in three months. Just like that. Just like that, things can change. Just like that. That's sports betting 101 right there. When you fire volume, when you have an edge, you can't time it. You need time. And right now has been the worst time. This is the four months of apples. This was apples, January, February, March, April, where as a company, they went from 197 to 162. Just like that, where they lost 15%, 20% of their value in just a matter of months. And this is a billion dollar, trillion dollar company. So imagine us with a smaller edge in sports betting. This is why I tell you, this is what the steam room is built for. So we can talk about how this really works and not about, oh, I got a game in a month and my trend is 65 and 22. And over the last 20 years, get the fuck out of here with that nonsense. Stop the nonsense, please. Please. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I visited four different pick selling sites today. I swear to you. I had to see it with my own eyes. Here's what I saw. What a coincidence. It's Saturday. And everyone has a game of the year. Game of the month. Everyone has their hot streak. They're very specific on that hot streak. <laughs> like uh, um, number one on uh, totals that are in the American League West on Saturdays. Okay, that's cool. So why aren't you just betting American League West totals Saturday? Why are you betting Monday through Friday then? I'm sick of all this shit, sick of the nonsense. I'm at a place in my life where I don't care. I can't be canceled. 
I could keep talk about it in the real way. And I'm in a, at a, a platform like Wager Talk where they allow it, where they welcome it, where they want their, their people, their followers, their supporters, even their detractors to get as much knowledge, information, education as possible, as possible. Jeff, I'm not sure if the Moses fight's still on. I, I, I'm not sure at all. Um, let me see if there's, is there a betting line? Did they take it down? If they took it down, if Vegas took it down, then it probably, it probably got canceled. Otherwise, if they got a number on it, then I'd say it's, it's on. But with that said, you just reminded me. My Oh, wow, look at that bounce. You see that bounce off that 68.4 we talked about? What do we say? What do we say, 68.410? Or 68.430, was it? Now we're looking at 68.8. It bounced right there. Like, charts don't lie. Again, I'm not saying, ooh, look at Houdini. What I'm saying is, as long as you eliminate emotion and just look, trust the charts, they do not lie. Like numbers do not lie. They're louder than anything. And what I love most about numbers is it don't matter the language. They're the same everywhere. Russian math is the same as American math is as the same as Guatemalan math is the same as French math. That's why I love it so much. So let's get into MMA because I got some things to get to and it's going to be a busy day. So let's get this shit going. You ready? All right. We're going to go through fight by fight. We're going to start off at the bottom and look to confirm. So we're going through my notes and everything together. So we're starting with Alice Ardeline and Bannon. And I'm going to give you my opinions if I don't have a, a bet on the fight, but I'm actually going to handicap with this. Oh, shit. Justin, you're the man. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Freaking Justin. God bless you. ATP. ATP Washington. ATP men's side Washington. Why don't I see him? Hold on. All right. I don't see it. I don't see it on my betting thing. I'm going to give it to you guys. ATP Washington, Arthur Kazal, C-A-Z-A-U-X against Luca Van Ash. We're betting Arthur Kazal, minus 160, minus 160. C-A-Z-A-U-X against Luca Van Ash, A-S-S-C-H-E. I don't, I don't see it. I'm looking at my, uh, men's tennis everywhere. It couldn't be Olympic tennis, right? No, nah, they would, they would get countries, not men. What am I talking about? Right. Or no. All right. If any of you guys can find it, let me know. And now I'm going to jump into MMA. Let's get this going. Let's get this going. All right. Alice Arden and, and Bannon. Bannon and Arden. Fight goes to a decision. About minus 200. Ooh. Bannon, huge favorite. All right. Bannon, minus 180 favorite. Oh, let me pull up my notes. All right. She lost her USC debut. She was a dog against Bruno Brazil, though, at plus 120. But Brazil's, Brazil only had one fight, and she was 0-1 at that. Bannon's going to have a three-inch reach advantage plus a stance advantage switch versus orthodox. That's also the highest success rate as far as stance goes. 
and Arlene making her debut. She's won five straight, but that was in a lot easier promotions. And more importantly, the problem is that her opponent's record was below 500. I think the line value is out on Alice Arteline, but I think you're going a little too far out on the risk curve with her making her UFC debut. I think it's Shauna Bannon or pass. Um, to me, it's a pass because I think you're paying too high for Bannon. At minus 150, I'm all over Bannon. Alex, bet it. Alex, bet it. If at 165, I would bet a 3% play. Even at 165, I would go 3%, sir. Because it's probably going to close a lot higher than that. All right, so we got a pass on Bannon. Even though, again, I do. See, if I was predicting who's going to win. All right, Nate, minus 155. Nail it. Nail it. Hit it. 3%. Hit it. At 155, I'd go 4%. I'd go 4% at 155. All right. Next up, next up, Bresky. Bresky and Parkin. Parkin's a dog, huh? All right. We got the fight goes to a decision, minus 150. All right, what do we have on Park in here? Park in 3-0. He won the Contender Series 2022. It's 2-0 as a favorite. His opponent's record were 4-0. So, you know, again, not a lot of experience, but it's not like they hadn't had they had wins in the UFC. He's just not getting it done with Flash. All of his wins are inside the distance. And then we got Brazil. Dresky closed as a dog every single fight. So no surprise he's closing as a dog now. The bad part is he's underperformed as a dog, meaning the closing line, the average has been plus 210. So his break even is about 32%, but he's only one in three. So he's only won 25%. So he's below market expectations, even though he's been a dog every, sign, every time out. Now, with that said, his losses are against, his three losses come against guys who have win, UFC wins, only a combined four fights. Um, but they do have UFC wins. Now, on this one, the fight goes to the decision, minus 150. I'll tell you the truth. Listen, here's the bottom line. Parkin's going to win this fight, but he's not worth the bet. Now, at the opener, at minus 200, to, to, see, here's the problem. It opened 200, was it 210, 240, 250, even just, what, four days ago. Four days ago, you could have got it at minus 270. Now it's at minus 400 plus. So you can't bet that side. You already know the favorite's not available to you. Like, as if you're a plus CD, if your goal is to win long term, if you're looking to not just bet today, if you're just betting today and you're never going to bet again, then the only thing that matters is picking this winner. The price doesn't matter. The line move doesn't matter. None of that shit matters. But if you're going to bet again, then it all does matter. And it's not about just picking the winner. The fact that parking open minus 200 was minus 270 just four days ago, and you're going to pay minus 400, you can't win doing that. There's no chance you're going to be a winning sports better doing that. Impossible. You may win today. You may win this week. You didn't even win this month. But you're not going to win long term doing that. Lane minus 415, betting the close. That's like buying Bitcoin at the top every time. How are you going to make money if you're constantly buying the top? You just can't do it. You're better off just passing, waiting for a crash. So for me here, it's dog or pass. But I'm not excited to bet this dog. I'm not excited to bet it. So for me, it's a pass. This is an easy pass. This is a tough card. Looks like a tough card already. All right, let's go. Crosby Patterson, Crosby Patterson. Now, this fight doesn't go to a decision. It's a huge favorite, obviously. No surprise there if you look at the history of these two men. And for welterweights, you usually don't see um, the no this high. It almost makes me want to bet the yes. It really does. I like that we're over, that we went over the one and a half. I really like that. What's the line on Patterson? 
Another heavy, chalky favorite. Patterson's going to win this fight. Yeah, Patterson, Patterson should win this fight, but there's no, no, no value in the line. Again, another situation where it's a stay away. Of course, Patterson, eight-inch reach advantage, six years in age. Against a Crosby, who loses his UFC debut against an O&O &O guy. Yeah, too many advantages on the Patterson side. So, yeah, I like Patterson, obviously. But nothing we could do with it. Instead, I like that over. That over on the four is where we're at. The over on the four is where it's at. That's the bet. That's the bet. All right, next up. Mokayev and Cop. Mokayev and Cop. You know where we're at here. Let's see what we could do with the total. The fight goes to a decision. About minus 160 favorite that it goes to a decision. All right, here's what we have with Mokayev. I, how do I not bet this kid? How could I not bet this kid? Listen, not only is he 6-0, every single fight he closed as the favorite. But more importantly, his average closing line was close to minus 700. So I get it. He did what he was supposed to do. The market thought he'd win about 88% of his fights. He did that. He won 100% of his fights. With that said, his opponents, they're about 500. But I like that he's six years younger. I like that, and I like the cops coming in off four wins. Usually, I don't like the buck momentum, but this is a situation where he was getting it done as a favorite. He'll now be an underdog for only the second time. The first time he was a dog, he didn't get the job done. Um, I just think Mokayev got a little bit disrespected at the opener coming off that unanimous decision against Alex Perez, and I think now the market has caught up with that. Where's that line at Mokayev? Up to minus 180. Wow. Okay. Line is climbing. Line is climbing. All right. So we got a good bet on Mokayev. Wow. Good news. The over on Patterson Crosby. The over's getting hit again. It's getting hit again. It's a good sign. That's a good sign. We got plus 165 on the over right now. It's plus 120, plus 120. So let's, let's look at some CLV there. Plus 165 is a 38 break even, 38%. Plus 120 is a 45% break even. Double that seven. So we're, gonna, we're near to 20% CLV there when you double it up. Wow. Wow. Yeah, win or lose, we did our job. We did our job. Forget that. Forget that. All right. I like the respect being given Nick Mokayev. Let's move on. Let's move on. Who's next? Oban, Elliot, Preston Parsons. Okay. I have some information for you guys here. You ready? This is coin flip as far as decision goes. Let's see a little bit of their, uh, all right, Preston Parsons, he's coming in off a win, two and two overall. His win, here's the thing, here's what you got to pay attention to with this kid, okay? This is, I, I like, when we, we taped the show two weeks ago for this, and early on, I, it stuck out to me. I thought Preston Parsons may be the side, okay? He had a decent opponent's record, but the problem is the opponent's record was his losses. So his losses came against, his two losses came against opponents that were a combined 10 and 5. His two wins come against opponents who are zero and zero. Okay. That's a telling sign. He hasn't beaten UFC caliber opponent yet. Who's been able to win at the UFC level. Oban Elliott on the flip side, his opponent, he's only one and oh, he did win his debut, closed as a huge favorite against Woodburn, got the job done. He won in the contender series. And uh, one of the groups that I work for actually bet Elliott. So they're on Oban Elliott. 
and uh, they've really made me take a, a, a deeper look. Okay, this, this is why, okay, here's what we're looking at. This is why we're looking at this total. We're seeing a lot of recency bias there. Preston Parsons, three straight decisions. Oh, Elliot, decision in contender series, decision in his debut, but they're fighting at welterweight where we know more than half the time, the judges do not get involved. So we're going to take advantage of this plus money on the under, but I think we may have a better bet by saying this one doesn't go to distance. So let's see that. Yep, no, even money. So we're gonna go no, even money. That's what we're betting. 3% play, 3% play. Oban Elliott. Three percent prop. All right. will not go the distance plus 100 at 3%. I like it. There we go. Let's bet this. Let's bet this. All right, let me add that in there. So now we just went 3% on Parsons. Elliot. No. Plus 100. So I got to write these down. This is a 3%. 3%. All right, all right, all right. And we're going to put Parsons on the side. We're going to put Parsons. You may see him come down. Down the pike, down the pike. All right, let's go, let's go. Next up, we are moving, moving. Oh, Bukaskis and Prankino, Prakneo, Prakneo. Bukaskis, Bukaskis, let's go, Modestus. Where are we at? Where are we at with these guys? All right. Fight goes to a decision about a minus 140. So that's about 58% break even that it does go to a decision. Let's see. Right. I don't know about that. Bukaskis, Bukaskis, 72. What can I give you here? Oh, Bukaskis, huge edges here. He's coming in off a loss, but he's won two or three as a favorite. Four-inch reach advantage. Switch stands for orthodox. Six years younger. Got to lean that way. I just wish the line was a little bit lower because there's not much room there for an edge, meaning the price on him right now is Minus 155. So I would have to conclude that he wins this fight. About 
minus 190, minus 200, 66, 67% to have an edge. Yeah, I can't get there. I can't get there. I do like him. That's why I'm putting him <clears throat> the name down because I always put in that long term, that long odds parlay. Do you know last week? True story. You know how we had that over in um the Garcia fight, was it? Steve, was that Steve? What's his name? Is that his name? Hold on. You guys, I swear to you, true story. Why well, I gotta see. Yeah, it was. Yeah, Steve Garcia. 40,000 cost me, 40 dimes. If that fight went under, went over one and a half rounds, $40,000 swing. It was like uh, 33, 34,000 in parlays. I had two long shot parlays. One was like a six fighter parlay. One was like an eight fighter parlay. Um, I, I bet 500 in parlays where I went 200, 200, 100. I had three parlays and two were still live, a $200 one and a $100 one. And uh, total would have been like 33, almost 34,000. Plus I had the straight bet. And I wish I, I couldn't have hedged because I had Shandaroba last. And then on the other one, I had the will not go to distance Shandaroba. So I probably could have hedged some, but anyway, wasn't the, I didn't even know. I don't even look at the parlays till after it's all over, or even the next day, to be honest with you. And could not believe it um, that if that fight would have went over the damn total, it was a 40 dime swing for me. And I would have went to the sphere. I would have bought tickets to the sphere. I got a link to buy sphere tickets, being an employee, it's for employees, fighters, fighters, family. And uh, the the ticket price for me is 3,000, 4,000 or 5,000. So I could imagine what they're gonna resell for and what uh, people are gonna be paying for them. But if, if our ticket price is, 5,000 for the best seats, 3,000 just to get in there. Ooh, what an event, what an event. I would have went, would have bought two tickets had I hit that parlay, but right now I'm not too sure we're gonna go. I know my girl wants to go. I wanna go, but all right, let's move on to the next fight, next fight. We don't have time. All right, Jake Hadley. Lawfren, let's go. Fight goes minus 225. Fight goes minus 225. So that's about a 70% break even. Right, Lawfren, 85 on Lawfren. Or. Hadley's got two straight losses, but they were against studs, I'm pretty sure. Let me look. Was that the matchup that I saw that? Oh, no, it wasn't that one. It wasn't that one. Sorry. Someone else had lost two straight. Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen had lost two straight, but it was to Evlo Evan Holloway. Hey, you got that? Is that the door? Okay. Uh, let's look at the list matchup with Lawfren. I think Lawfren's going to be a tough out here. His wins, yeah, he's got one win in the UFC. Wasn't against a guy who even had a UFC win. So Hadley definitely has the better UFC experience for sure. So this is definitely a step up for the favorite. And maybe a little bit too high of a favorite for me. Like this is a situation where if I'm picking the winner, you got a gun to my head. It's a different story. There's a difference between betting it and picking it. And you got to be able to separate yourself from both. Yeah, I think Lawford's going to hardly won't be able to imply, uh, implement, any of his ground game against this kid, I don't think. Yeah, this is Lawfren's fight to win, to lose. Yeah, 
gun the head, we're on Laughlin. Laughlin, just no, no, no value. Let's go, Meatball Mali and Bruna Brazil. Let's go, Meatball Mali in Brazil. What's the line? Goes to a decision about minus 120. So that's about what a 54, 55% break even for Meatball Mali. I when they give her easy fights, they give McCann these easy fights like. McCann's got 12 UFC fights. Brazil's got three. So he's got four times the amount of UFC fights. He's six and three as a favorite. She's coming in off a win. She's fought so much more experienced guys. Brazil's one and two, and her win is against an 0-0 opponent. Meatball's going to win this fight. There's just no freaking line value. This is a, this is a favorite's night. This is a favorite's night that you can't bet. Another situation where you could have had Molly at minus 240. I'd open I'm not going to lay 350. Now it was even minus 315 just not all that long ago. Just last night, you could have laid minus 315. Minus 310 just two days ago. You're going to lay 350 now? No way. But yeah, this is the kind of fight that Meatball Molly wins. Could Brazil beat her? Let's see. What's her path to victory? Brazil could implement her, her ground game. That's what it's going to come down to. I don't see it. I don't see it. All right, next up, next up, Pineda and Wood, Pineda and Wood. Oh, we're going to be out of here soon. Okay, the no is minus 200. Love you too, baby. The no is minus 200. All right. The no is minus 200. Oh, hold on a second here. This isn't making sense. Give Ace a second here. Something's not right. Something smells. Okay. All right, it's be woods below. Why is this? Oh. Six straight decisions for wood. Pinet is coming in off a decision. Yeah, I, I like the no, but not at two to one. Not at two to one. Damn. I do like the no. And another big chalky, 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 chalky. I'd take the dog there. It's not like, man, one of these dogs is going to come in and, and smash everyone's money line parlay. That much you could be sure of. Never fails. All right, Arnold, Allen, and Giga. Let's go Giga and Arnold. What do we got here? Decision, minus 200. Decision, minus 200. Allen, minus 220. No way. I respect the last two losses for Arnold. And I get it. He's ain't no as a favorite. 
But his wins come against guys who won less than 60% of their fights. It's his losses that come against guys that won close to 80. When I look at Giga, dude, he's off a win. He's 8-1 and one overall. He's 4-0 oh as a dog. So every time he's expected to lose, he's gotten the job done. He's going to have a four-inch reach advantage. His wins come against guys who won 61% of his fights. Like, Giga's going to be a hard out here, man. Yeah, man, giga, 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 sticking out to me. What's the line? We got to do it. We got to do it. Hold on one sec. Let me just check something. All right, let me pull out some notes that I had from the show back then, because I know I looked at this fight pretty closely. Ugh. Oh, I don't like my show bets today. I hate when we tape two weeks out. It's never good. It's never good. Yeah, what do I have on Giga? I just need to make some uh need to look at that. We're going giga, man. I gotta take some giga action. There's just too too much value to pass up. Anything higher than freaking 150, I'd be tempted. But at one it's plus 200 at Superbook. Yeah, I gotta go three percent, three percent on Giga. Let's go, Giga. Plus 190 at DraftKings. That sounds fair. 3% on Giga. 3% on Giga. Three percent. All right, there we go. Giga, giga, giga. Next up, Rodriguez and Duncan. This one's tough. This one's tough. I'm going to share some insights with you here. Here's why. All right. The no minus 250, no minus 250. So we got minus 250, 70, 70 plus percent chance on the no. All right, Duncan. All right, here's what I can tell you. I have conflicting groups with one of them taking Gregory Rodriguez at minus 130, at minus 130. Uh, 
I mean, Leroy Duncan at minus 130, sorry, at minus 130. And then uh, Rodriguez at like, what, plus? Or the other way around. They ended up having both sides. Let's just get at that. Sorry, the doorbell was ringing, so I got a little distracted. I got some furniture coming in. Just give me 30 seconds. Babe, can you handle this for 20 minutes? Okay. I just got some furniture coming. Yeah, where I have, so one of my groups is on Duncan, one of them's on Oban Elliott. I mean, on, uh, there it is again, that one's an, one where I disagreed with. I mean, on Rodriguez, the other one on Duncan. I'm going to tell you, the, the group on Rodriguez has been doing better. The group on Rodriguez has definitely been doing better. I'm not going to, I bet it for both, believe it or not. That's what I do, because they bet it at different times. Um. We'll see how that turns out. We'll see how it turns out. Let's move on to the next one. So, yeah, that one's a little. That one confuses me because everything looks like the 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 Duncan side. He's closed as a favorite every time. He's right around market average where he hasn't outperformed. He hasn't underperformed. Hasn't overperformed. His wins come against guys below five hundred. Um, so this is a step up against a guy with experience like Rodriguez who um, definitely has a lot more experience and, and his opponents had a lot more UFC experience. That's for sure. Tough fight, tough fight. That's why I could see groups on opposite sides. Let's move to the next one. Let's move to the next one. Let's go. Patty Pimblett, Bobby Green. We're already on this fight, as you know. Fight goes to a decision, about a minus 130. Pimblet. Well, you know, we got Pimblet. We got a 4% play on Patty the Batty. Let's go, Patty. So I'm just betting, uh, putting a little something in on a fight for somebody to text me. All right, we got Patty. We like the Patty side. Just so much to like here. Kid's eight years younger. Closes a favorite every time. He's outperformed that betting market. You look at Bobby Green. Listen, you want to bet him as if he's getting decent plus money, but even it was a favorite in this spot. And I get it. Recent, he's won three of his last four, but he's a a little better than 500 fighter in the UFC. So you got to pick your spots if you're ever going to bet him as a favorite. I just think uh, Pimblet has that kind of uh, fan hate almost where they want to see him lose. Kind of like uh, you're seeing with Ian Machado Gary. And I think a lot of times that gives us value the other way. All right, let's move on to the co-main event and main event. Here's what I'm going to tell you about these two fights, and you do as you please. The Aspinall price is just way too high. Like, he's supposed to win this fight. But it's just a little bit too high. So I'm going to put Blades down, and you may see this come. You may get a play on this. 
on, on blades, small bet, bet on uh, blades, just like you may on Bala, I'm telling you guys. Now, um, I do like the Bala Muhammad side. I think both favorites in the co-main and the main are overpriced. If, again, gun the head, pick a winner. I probably would agree on the favorites. Usually the favorite does look better um, on paper. That's why they're favored. But I just think the price is just way too high. A lot is, is in favor of Leon Edwards. We'll see how the night plays out. Law. So here's what we're looking at. Blades and Bilal, we put on the sides for possible, possible bets. Right now, we're going to go in on... No, I'm going to sit that one out because we're seeing some steam coming in on the Preston Parsons side. Steam coming in on the Preston Parsons side. So yeah, we're going to sit that one out. I was taking a look at uh, possibly the Oban Elliott side, but yeah, no, 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 no. Not with seeing that move. So now let's visit back in our Major League Baseball before we shut it down. Nice two hours today. Let me just look at that Washington St. Louis. Nah, nothing's pushing me there. All right. Oh, wait. Yeah, actually, we're going to go under, under 3% play, 3% play. Washington, St. Louis, under 8.5, minus 120. Washington, St. Louis, under 8.5, minus 120. And that is going to do it. Now, keep your eyes open for some MMA as well as anything else that may come across. I'm going to take a look one more time, run around, see if there's any last question before we could shut it down, see any last play coming. And we will be good to go. Stay on the grind. Stay on the grind. We will be back next week. More football should be coming your way. Let's have a good day in MMA. Shut down this week with a winning Saturday and Sunday. And keep moving forward, baby. Keep grinding. I love you guys. Best of luck the rest of the way. Do some damage. And let's have a great weekend.